Hey, 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 all you mathletes, welcome to your first um, Math 400 Calculus 1 online video. Um, so, as you probably could tell, we are skipping right through Chapter 1. Um, basically, all that was was just saying, hey, here's a problem. Um, what type of math would you use to solve this? Would it be pre-calculus or calculus? Um, and then they would go through... Uh, a lot of stuff that you should already know, like how to find the equation of line, trig functions, how to work with logarithms, uh, and so on and so forth. So there is a, um, a pre-calculus review packet on Canvas if you want to take a look at that. Uh, if you don't, that's fine. Uh, you can also, if you want more uh, another resources, you can go through uh, that first chapter um, if you really want to. Um, but we're going to skip right to chapter two and start talking about the calculus so some of you might have already seen this stuff before when you're fighting when we're talking about limits um this whole chapter is going to be on limits limits is one of the first um major concept or it is the first major concept you see in calculus and calculus is there's only three limits derivatives and integrals so chap this um chapter two is all about limits um, so we're going to be finding limits uh, graphically and numerically in this section. So what do we mean by finding a limit? Well, people find limits all the time. Roadways have speed limits. Uh, toddlers figure out the limits of their stress parents, which we're going through right now. I have two. Uh, and people push computers to the limit all the time, especially if you're a gamer. Uh, so a limit is a value that something approaches. So in math, that concept is really, really similar. So limits analyze a function, usually a given, a given function or a graph, uh, and answer the question, as x approaches a specific value, what happens with the function value or the y value? So as x is getting closer and closer to something, what's going on with the, the function value? Is it also getting closer and closer to something? Or are they approaching two different values? Is it split? Like what, what's happening? So we have three major ways to, to evaluate that. We can look at it uh, numerically, graphically, and analytically. So we're gonna be doing the numeric method first and then we'll get into the graphic. So numerically, we're trying to surround and close and yeah, keep hitting the tripod, close in on a particular x value to see what's happening with the function value or the y value. Like, are we also closing in on something or are we going like, like this or, you know, what's happening? <clears throat> so let's start with this function. f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. <clears throat> so as it stands, what's the one value you cannot plug in for x? Well, that would be x equals 2 it would make the function undefined. <clears throat> so what happens to the function <coughs> excuse me, around that value? Well, to answer that, we're going to fill out this table. And I've already done that for us. Uh, so I've listed out some x values here. So this is the value that is in question. But we want to see, well, what's happening around x equals 2? So we're trying to get really, really close. So the thought is, is we're going to plug in a number that's a little bit smaller than 2 and then a number that's a little bit larger than 2. And at most, you're off by like 0.1 in either direction. So 1.9, 2.1. Then you're going to move in and get a little bit closer. So off by like 0.01, positive and negative. And then you're gonna move in a little bit closer because you're trying to get really, really, really close to two without actually hitting it. And you're just gonna plug it into the function and see what the function does. So here we've, I've done just that. I plugged in like all these x values except for two into the function and these were the results after plugging them in. Okay, so the x values are getting closer and closer to two. Let's look at the y values or the function values and see if anything is happening. So for values from the left of two, so literally the left of two, these are on the left, here's two, these are on the left. So those are all smaller. 
if you look at the function values, what are they getting closer and closer to? Well, they're getting closer to or approaching four. Then for values from the right of two, over here on the right or larger, as x gets closer to two, the function values of the y values also get closer to or approach four. So since we approached four from both sides, we can say that the limit is four. Okay. All right, so that's basically what a limit is gonna do. It's, it's gonna see like, all right, if we look at the X values, if they approach something from either side, do the Y values approach something as well? And it's, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It just kind of depends on your function. Okay, so let's talk about some notation first and then we'll try some other examples. So the phrase, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l can be written as follows because we don't like to write this whole phrase out uh, every single time. So it's nice to have a kind of a shorthand notation. So the limit would just be lim and then you're going to have your function either in function notation or you'll actually know what it is. Uh, as x approaches c, so down beneath the lim, x approaches, so that's the arrow, c. And then is is equals, and it is what? It is l. So that is your standard limit notation for these limits. So we're going to be seeing this all over the place. You're going to see this throughout uh, the rest of your mathematical career. Um, so any class you take with calculus is going to have this thing in there somewhere. It doesn't have to be a lot, but um, probably not as much as this class, but there you go. Okay, so let's go ahead and try out a couple other examples, and then we'll go to uh, the graphics uh, stuff. Okay, so when just as a side note too, when you fill or when you do these tables, uh, you're going to have the function values provided uh, because you're not going to have a calculator at your disposal. Um, and so I'm not going to expect you to plug in like 0.1 into a function like this and ask you to calculate it by hand. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. So you'll be given these function values here. I just forgot to type them in. So that's why they're written. Um, and the x values are what you're going to have to fill in most of the time, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then you're also going to have to evaluate the limit. All right, so example A, uh, the limit of 1 minus cosine of x over x as x approaches 0 is, so let's look at our table. So the x values that follow that same pattern, it was off by 0.1. And then we moved in by 0.01, and then moved in by 0 0.001 from zero. So the y values are right here. So as x gets closer and closer to zero from the left, it looks like the y values are also getting closer and closer to zero. It's like it sneaks in another zero into the decimal point. So if we plugged in like 0 0.0001, there'd probably be another zero in there. And the same thing is happening on this side. They're just positives. So from the right, they're also approaching zero. So from the left side at zero, from the right side at zero, they're approaching the same number. So you end up with zero. And there you go. All right, part B. Uh, same thing on the x -fiz. We got it all filled in for you. Filled in the y's as well. So this one, we just have to evaluate it. So as we move in from the left side, these y values, it looks like they're getting closer and closer to 0.5. Because again, kind of the same thing is happening. It's like you sneak in another zero right after the five. So shoving this one and the three like down further and further. 
And then over here on the right side, this is also getting closer and closer to 0 0.5. It's kind of like it's sneaking in a couple of nines after the four, so that's gonna round it uh, to a 0.5. So you're approaching 0.5 from both sides. So that is the limit. So this function is approaching the value of 0.5 uh, or 1 half as x is approaching zero. <clears throat> okay, now this last one, we've got the function values all plugged in, so now let's figure out, okay, well, what are the x values that are going in there? So the one, that's the c value, that's what x is approaching. So if we follow that same pattern, if we're off by 0.1, that would be uh, 0 0.9, I'm off by 0.01, so 0 0.99, and then 0 0.999. And then let's kind of flip that around on the other side, off by 0.1, so now we have to add it. So 1.1, 1 1.01, 1 1.001, 1 .001. So if you have a problem that was like this, where these X values were left blank, you need to fill them in and then you can answer the question. Okay, but this one's a little bit different. From the left side, it looks like your your y values are getting more and more negative. It's not like they're getting closer and closer to something. They keep getting multiplied by 10. So that's shooting down towards negative infinity. And on the right side, they're all positive, but still getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's shooting off to positive infinity. So we're not approaching the same thing. So if you're approaching two different numbers or uh, two different values, the limit does not exist. So big old DNE. You could write out does not exist as well, um, or you can just say DNE. Okay. Um, so that's how you work with a table. Um, so in the next video, uh, we'll look at how to look, do a limit using a graph.